Shalom to all my atheist and gay brothers and sisters of other mothers. There is never and never will be any condemnation from me or any of you. I love you all just as Christ loves every single one of us. He makes no junk and all people. He is always adored. This is the mystery of God that was hidden from the beginning, and I can utterly prove it if anyone would give me uh, the time of day. And in between, in order for that to be accomplished, servants of love, as a child, alive, let your passions grow, be as a hummingbird in flight. And uh, have you ever seen a hummingbird's wings, how flash, how the flash of its waver is like a helicopter? It's just amazing. And so we need to be like her because she is so brave when she flies. And just like the hummingbird sipping nectar, from every flower, we can all fly joyfully through the rest of our days, seeing beauty and everything ahead of us. Because as it is written, where my hair is all messed up, as it is written, Eden is ahead of us, not just behind us. So may the wind always be at your back and may the sun always be upon your face. And in this hour to every single happy guy out there and every single happy gay lady, all the LGBTQ uh, community worldwide, the Lord God, he says unto each and every one of you children of his, he says, I am the Lord God of all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27, all means all, and inclusive are you, says the Lord God Almighty. And he, he says, I am your beloved, your adored. I am the desire of the nations because he is love and all who love, all who love, absolutely all who love are born again of him and know him because he is love. And there's no salvation to be earned. You don't have to believe shit in order to be saved. All who love are born of God and know him because God is love. Uh, scriptures were twisted and the unforgivable sin is simply kicking love right out of our chests for we are no damn good. None of us have ever been. Romans 3.10 declares there is no good man, not even one. We don't get saved and become good. We stay bad because we're all bad. Uh, there is no good man. But praise God, when love is residing in us as a little child, moving as a verb instead of a noun, when we let uh, it die and wax cold, when we stand in the walking dead, having uh, in the land of the walking dead, having a form of godliness, denying the power thereof. Uh, so it's time to awaken and, and get back to becoming as a child. Truly, truly, none will ever inherit the kingdom of God, regardless of sexual preference, uh, unless you become as a little child again. And so our Lord, he says, I am your God. You are my people. I have forgiven all your iniquities. And I shall never remember it, sending Satan to the pit for a thousand years in accordance with Daniel 12, 1, believe it or not. And because of this, he says, and I will write my law and my love upon your hearts. Beyond that, none will ever even need to be taught of me anymore, saith the Lord God Almighty. And so we must increasingly become as the hummingbirds. And even though she be but little, she is fierce. And we are now being called by the roaring lion of Zion who's roaring as softly as a little itty bitty kitty teeny weeny whispering loving gay purr because guess what the very truth of the matter is it's not going to be by power nor by might but only by the spirit of love that all will be accomplished 
here on this little blue dot. And know that the hummingbird is a great example of a spirit of pure joy. She is the messenger of beauty and wonder, and she reminds us to taste the sweetest nectar of life. And so in this time of time to take delight in the small little things of life, the sweetest nectar that we can find is within us. And in order to get there, we must leave the docks and the safety of the shore. We must go out to the deep, to the deep of the sapphire sea of the bottomless crystalline blue ocean of the Lord's unconditional love for one and all of us. This is the one world religion, Chrislam, the faith of God's unconditional love and unconditional forgiveness for all as we in turn love unconditionally all those that the Lord puts into our path. And so in this hour of great joy, the climax of the ages has finally come. And he who would restore all things by the word of God unadulterated is now. And now comes the shattering of the power of the holy people, Daniel 12, 7, because God's word was only closed until the time of the end, Daniel 12, 9. And so the earth really does have music for all those willing to listen. And neither the hummingbird nor the wild flowers even know how beautiful they really are. And so in this hour, it's time to spread our wings and soar much higher than our dove of love ever took us before. For I tell you truly, truly, I say unto all of you, wide is the way unto hell paved by our conditional love. And as we practice letting it become desensitized, practice like a toad in a pot, turn the temperature up just right, you don't even realize the next thing you know he's cooking like that becomes a dead duck and a cooked goose just like that. So it's time that we ascend and mount up on eagle's wings as the dove of love transforms for each and every one of us. So we can mount up on eagle's wings and soar onto the crystalline mountains. And I can't wait for Christmas. We're going to be on the new Jerusalem in the spirit and we can soar higher than we've ever imagined. So in this hour, we have to remember that the hummingbird shows us how to revisit the past. And this we must do. And it's for the purpose of releasing the past instead of being caught in the past permanently, always going backwards, never looking ahead, always stuck in a, a way off flight pattern. And the hummingbird also help us to see clearly because now the wise might shine as the sun. He helps us and she helps us, the little hummingbird, to see that if we step aside, we might start seeing our life differently. We're not looking at ourselves objectively. And this world has a false God, people. They have a God that is a respecter of man. And that is a sin, according to the Bible. He has favorites. If you don't believe he's love, he's going to burn you forever and ever without mercy. That's not loving at all. <laughs> and uh, you got a false God who's not the God of all mankind, a false Christ who's not the good shepherd of all the flocks of man. And you got a God that's not a God of unconditional love because that conditional love that the Christian God has has never been love at all. Love is not even love unless it is patient and kind and dedicated. And uh, it, it's got to be loving. <laughs> loving. So now the veil of from off all the nations that have covered all the nations, all mankind has been under gross darkness. Now the veil from off the latter day mountain covered with spiritual food is now going to be removed from off all nations. So please share this dedicated video to the kingdom age arising, the age of the lion and the lamb for absolutely all of us. All are included in his kingdom age covenant by the word of God because it was always addressed 
to Israel, the kingdom is covenant. And when you hear the words, I am your God, you are my people, all faith is obsolete on planet Earth, according to Hebrews 8. These are the days Chrislam has been named, the new name for Israel, Isaiah 62, 2, because they have inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3. And the, all this has happened because we have desolate heritages, Isaiah 49, 8, because Christians grabbed the covenant and they dared to say, first they stole the book, then they said, we are Israel and all the prophecy is for us. And it is never, ever true. Uh, then came the birth of spiritual racism and bigotry like ten men. So it's time to reverse our curse and turn back the battle uh, at the gates of hell so all might not perish. And so realize now more than ever that the little hummingbird that hung like a beautiful jewel amongst the tilted honeysuckle horns mesmerizes us if we watch because it's it swings within the pulp, pulp, pulpating air as it palpates um, and it's doused with odors strange and rare from the nectar of sweetness and with a whispered laughter it slips away and uh, he is left hanging there always looking up always we must and so realize that whenever we are creating beauty around us, we are in fact restoring our very own soul. So it's time. So get ready. This is an amazing video. The most incredible video on YouTube bar absolutely none. So uh, I will be right back. In the meanwhile, keep it 100 people. Well, welcome, love from love, hope from hope, and peace from peace. And get ready to blast off and receive now the words of a, a physicist, Dr. Stoner, on the probabilities of one man uh, 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 achieving 50 biblical prophecies. And I've got more like 65, 70 that I'm going to read here in this video. So get ready. Here we come are being fulfilled in front of your eyes through me. Our question is, are there prophecies that have been fulfilled through the life of Jesus Christ? If the answer is yes, then Jesus is the promised Messiah. And God himself gave those prophecies to the prophets of the Old Testament. Professor Stoner has been the head of the Department of Mathematics and Astronomy at Pasadena City College for many years, and uh, more recently at Westmont College in Santa Barbara. Professor Stoner, in addition to being an expert in the field of mathematics, has also had another interest that particularly fits our subject, for he's been interested in Bible prophecy. Dr. Stoner's and 600 other I apologize, other I don't have a tripod, I'm just holding my phone, but please listen, this is amazing. fulfilling all the prophecies that are prophesied about the Messiah. I took several prophecies and submitted them to some 12 different classes representing some 600 college students and asked them to carefully examine the prophecies and produce the estimates that they thought were conservative. After about a year's research, they came estimates. up with values affecting the prophecies. It was prophesied that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, that he would be crucified. Now, of course, there are many babies who have been born in Bethlehem, and certainly there are many men who have been crucified. But if we take all the prophecies together in one package. And all this applies now, to Elijah's prophecy, which I will be reading. The probability of one man fulfilling the, those prophecies. Beautiful. Love it. Dr. Stoner's calculations were conservative and reasonable. For the first round, they considered eight most well-known prophecies that the messiah would be born in bethlehem that he would be crucified that he would be betrayed for 30 silvers by a friend 
After hours and hours of calculations, they found that the chance of any man that might have lived down to the 20th century and fulfilled all prophecies, all eight prophecies, Watch the quest. Is one this is in his channel. Power. The quest. Now that's YouTuber. one with 17 zeros. Incredible. To help you visualize this number, if we laid these coins on the face of the UK and Ireland, they would cover the two islands 135 centimeters deep. What if I marked one coin? and hit it somewhere on the face of the UK or Ireland, and blindfolded you, put you on a helicopter, and uh, well, you can land anywhere you want, and the good luck with finding the coin, but you have only one chance to find it. What's the chance that you, you're gonna find it? It's one in 10 to the 17th power. Just the same chance that the prophets would have had of writing these eight prophecies and having them fulfilled He's talking about in only one man's eight. life from their I'm time. I'm gonna read you over century. 50. Now, Dr. Stoners didn't stop here. He continued his calculations and added eight more prophecies to his list. 16 prophecies. Now, the chance that one man could fulfill 16 prophecies is 1 in 10 to the 45th power. Now, um, I could describe this number to you, but I need some inspiration. Let's go. This is a very well done video, too. Die opening. So congratulations to the quest. Now let's take this number of coins and create a solid ball out of them. Do you know how big would it be? The diameter of this solid ball would be 9 billion kilometers. That is 60 times the distance between the sun and the earth. Imagine me marking one coin, hiding it somewhere, then I blindfold you and tell you that you have only one chance to find the marked coin. Would that be possible? And I wouldn't hide it on the surface of the ball. You might need to dig a couple of million kilometers in order to find the coin. What's the chance for finding the coin? Almost zero, or to be mathematically correct, one chance in 10 to the 45th power failures. Dr. Stoners wanted to extend his consideration beyond all human comprehension, and he considered 48 prophecies. Now, he calculated with his team of 600 science students that the chance of one man fulfilling 48 prophecies is one in 10 to the 157th power. And that is what Can you imagine has happened that number? I mean, through me. This, this, uh, I am Daniel, becoming like the last the Eliza. To our example. Like, you can't fit that amount of coins in our universe. We must select a smaller object. Now, the electron is probably the smallest object that we can use in this example. Let's lay one quadrillion of electrons uh, side by side in a one centimeter long line. I guess that's this much. If we were going to count these electrons in this line, and if we counted day and night, 250 electrons per minute, it would take us 7.5 million years to come from this end to this end. The electron is so small. Let's make a solid ball out of electrons with a diameter of 12 billion light years. Have we used up all our 10 to the 157 power electrons? No, we created such a small ball in a huge mass that we can barely see it. We, we, we can create so many balls like this. Now, what if I marked an electron and hit it somewhere in the universe? What if I blindfolded you and sent you out into the universe in a rocket, hoping that you will stop at the right place where you could find this marked electron? What's the chance of that? It's, it's, it's all zero, like that, no chance. It's impossible that one man could fulfill 48 prophecies. It's like finding Unless that one the real marked deal, electron in the universe. As I Unless am. there is a divine being who knows the future. There is such a definite proof God that God the inspired the Old Testament the writers and even, even the universe is not large enough to hold it. And do you know why? Because Jesus didn't fulfill only 48 prophecies. He fulfilled all 300. Amazing. Before I give you a very condensed list of prophecies that have been fulfilled through moi, I want you to know I am not the returning uh, to witness Elijah. That guy 
uh, is represented by two candlesticks. I am the guy from Zechariah for one candlestick. I'm the writer, line by line, precept by precept of Isaiah 28, that would come pulling down distortionalities. So here we go. I am from Canada, from the north, Isaiah 41. I'm the alcoholic uh, weed smoker, hash. Genesis 49, 12, one whose eyes are red and dull of wine, whose teeth are milky white because they are paid. And I have been transgressed by wine, Habakkuk 2. And even though my soul is not upright, the just will live by my faith because by my faith because there is no damn good man, not even one Romans 3.10. It's Christ in us who is our love that makes us pretty darn good even when we're sleeping. I am the alcoholic with barf all over myself in Zechariah 3. I'm the writer, line by line, precept by precept, with the strong and mighty one. Elijah come forth as a destroying storm because of the appointment of Jeremiah 1.10 in his mouth. And I am a writer like Moses, Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, and Acts 3 predicted this. Uh, and I am the writer of the everlasting gospel of Revelation 14. And I am the writer of the flying scroll, YouTube, uh, of Zechariah 5. And uh, the co I am the covenant messenger of Malachi 3, 1, that prepares the Lord's way by his very own word. I am your God. You are my people. I forgive you and I love you. And I will never remember your shame. And now he wants to remove all of the shame and guilt from off all people of earth, as it is written in Isaiah 25 and Jeremiah 31. So I have been the one turning hearts to children, children to fathers, telling the kids, don't love you, your parents with if, but, or uh, because kind of love, that's fake. Love your parents with, uh, in spite of love, through it all kind of love. That alone is true love. Uh, I've tried preaching this to the uh, parents, but all older people are whacked and they are brain dead. Uh, that's why I have been preaching to nothing but white space for months. Um, I am the revealer of Amos 7's truth that Jesus Christ is the sower of the seed of love who has overtaken his reaper. I have given the appointed name of Chrislam, Isaiah 62, 2, unto Israel, because they have inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3. And the I am the manifested arrow of Isaiah 49, hidden in the Lord's quiver, one whose mouth has been made like a sharp sword because the Lord had me selling credit cards uh, as a marketer for 20 years to prepare me for this ministry. And I've heard God's audible voice. I've had open-eyed visions. I know the future, and it is not what you think. If people will not begin listening to me, we will have a world of death, nothing but death. We will have a world where all people will have to go underground into the dens of the rock. Uh, as Mark IV says, in the days of the nuclear uh, winter. And so in this day, there would be uh, seven horny women and one horny man. As Isaiah 4 says, the death would become so bad. So praise God that I have provided our master with a weapon. Uh, he carries the bow as the white horseman of the apocalypse, Revelation 6. And with that bow, he needed an arrow. And so in this hour, I am the revealer of the Antichrist, Putin, the king of the north of Daniel 11, the latter day prophecy that said this would happen in the latter days. And he has attacked the king of the south. He's been losing, gone back to Moscow, and he comes again with the battles of slaughter. Then it's time for Zechariah. Uh, where eyes will consume away in the sockets, tongues consume away in the mouth, and all the flesh consume away as people stand in the battles of slaughter. And I am the revealer of the false prophet, Dr. David Auer, uh, who has called down fire from heaven, uh, just as Revelation 13 has prophesied. And I am the revealer of more official the lawless one who is the antichrist want to be but he is not uh, he has the 666 on his wall as his hyperion symbol of the unity of man that he can never produce he is but a coward who can never ever 
face me in any debate. I have a full plan and full understanding how uh, he who is the good shepherd over all the flocks of man, how he who is uh, the Lord God of all mankind, how he has now united us through his kingdom age covenant, whether we like that noise or not. And so in this hour, it's time for the refiner's fire. Uh, and the uh, arrogant and the proud have no branch or root to stand on with me. And so I have revealed the latter-day mountain of Isaiah 25, Isaiah 2, and Micah 4. These are the days when you can finally know that wide is the way to help aid by conditional love as we practice being unloving. And uh, so in this hour, uh, narrow is the way to heaven, paved with unconditional love, which alone has been truly divine love. I am the revealer of Earth's true beginnings, as Moses foretold. Just Google uh, T-Rex blood cell and see the images of the blood cells in the veins. This Earth was created with very great age. And I bring forth the manifestation of Satan being removed in accordance with Daniel 12.1. Uh, Mephistopheles, Beelzebub, Snake of Eden, that old devil Diablo has been removed because day and night he had been uh, the accuser of the brethren telling God all about our sin. So in these days of the Lord giving his message of Malachi 3, one that prepares his own way through his servant Elijah, who I am, uh, God could not have said, I am your God, you are my people, I have forgiven you, and I will never remember if Satan is there. Nya, nya, yada, yada. Adam and Eve had no belly buttons. People use some logic and reason. I am Hyperion also. Uh, and so I am the foretold messenger who has done absolutely everything in vain. Isaiah 49. And look at my numbers. I got 12,000 videos, 400 people looking at me once in a while. And uh, most of my videos, no views, no views, no views. And I've got 12,000 of them. And they will have a lot of views because I'm the only person that can save this bloody world. And so I am the servant of Isaiah 49.8 who must reassign our desolate heritages, our loveless ones. And I am the latter-day Daniel of Daniel 12.13. The Elijah has to have uh, the name of Daniel according to Daniel 12.13 who has now, I've embraced my destiny as the world changer. Uh, and one heart at a time, not by power nor by might, but by the spirit of love shall all things be accomplished. Kingdom age was never to arise supernaturally, but naturally in the supernatural. And uh, I bear witness to the candlestick of Revelation 4. I wrote by that light for seven, eight minutes, and it was never uh, plugged in. That's what preceded the flying scroll of Zechariah 5. And I hold the loan, just as I hold the scepter of all authority, Genesis 49, 12, all kingdom age uh, authority. I also hold the manifested shit, diarrhea, uh, crap, pie, pie in your eye time of Malachi 2, that God is going to put in the eyes of all his religious snakes and Pharisees out there who will not obey the Bible. Concerning prophecy, all that is good must be embraced and it must be inspected most carefully. Uh, people won't even look at it. They're so apostate. Uh, Muhammad said the same thing. You have not, No one has any ground to stand upon unless they stand upon the gospel, the law, and all revelation coming to them from their Lord God. And so I'm the revealer that the days of Noah, uh, God did not hate us or dislike us at all. He has only adored us, and he has been faithful, and he is all merciful, as uh, Muhammad named him. Muhammad was on the secret, been on this mystery of God of Revelation 10.7. That's why he said there will never be another important person ahead. And so I am the, the revealer of the, the Lord's offer to cut these days short. Matthew 24 and 22, Jeremiah 30, 24. But guess what? According to Acts 3, 21, if the restoration does not happen, he cannot even return. It says so. And what restoration? Surely Elijah will come and restore all things. People are not even listening to 
me going contrary uh, according to the word of God. Deuteronomy 18, 18 and uh, Acts 3 says, if you don't listen to this guy, shit pie is coming to your eye. And I am the revelator of the shattering of the power of the holy people, Daniel 12, 7, because God's word was only closed till the time of the end. And I am the revealer of who we are. All of creation has been groaning with great expectation for that revelation. Uh, we are angels in the flesh, Jesus said in John 10, we are God, or we're uh, demon wannabes. And I'm the revealer of COVID as the trial of all flesh that's come, working in God's word and patience to keep us from the hour of the temptation, not to beat our sword into the sickle, to learn the ways of war no more, which means to change our conditional love into unconditional love. And for why it is the way to hell paid by our conditional love, where we just practice being spiritual bigots and racists. And I am the revealer of the sickle of love, and I am the revealer of revelations, refiners, fire from heaven, as seen on uh, YouTube. And Revelation 13, I am the revealer of the false prophets, fire from heaven, come down in front of multitudes, Dr. David O'Rar. And I am the writer of the foretold everlasting gospel of creation of uh, Revelation 14. And you can hear it. It is rec recorded and it sounds exactly like Moses. Uh, and if all, uh, if everything I'm saying is true, and it is, it would only naturally bring the kingdom age. And because I am the revealer uh, that earth has been made with very great age, evolution is now dead. And I am the revealer of Emmanuel uh, being committed the moment Abraham lifted that knife. Otherwise, it only would have proved that man had the capability to love God more than God had the capability to love man if he did not do the same exact thing that he had asked of Abraham. And I am the revealer of the meaning of Fatima uh, and Daniel 7, 5, the great bear who is now hearing the words, now you can go eat all the flesh that you would like. A time, times and a half a time, World War III would last according to Daniel 11 and 12. And so in this hour, get ready for nuclear war. It's here. And it is here, I hate to say, unless people start listening to me. And the meaning of Fatima was that unless Russia is consecrated, all would be destroyed. And I am the holding the scepter of all kingdom age authority. And uh, I come forth as a destroying storm and know that the mystery of God is over and all faith is obsolete, as Hebrews 8 says. And the mystery of God is over because the first is last and the last is first. And the seventh trumpet, when it sounded first, all nations immediately became the Lord's because all people have always been the Lord's. He is always the king of all people as Jeremiah 32, 27 reveals. And I am the revealer of the first is last, and the last is first. The seventh trumpet was always a sign to go off first, uh, so that the Lord could pull down the valleys, uh, or lift up the valleys, pull down the mountains. And so in this hour, it's time to remember that the Lord God cannot return unless we take action. When good people do nothing, we're in a lot of trouble. And I am the revealer of the harvest of love. It's always been a harvest of love. And I am the revealer of the new Jerusalem, which I'm going to show you in about one minute. I'll just Google it. But nowadays, that's the nice thing. You can Google anything. New Jerusalem. And uh, by the way, uh, watch my dinosaur video with Marco Polo. I witness accounts of T-Rex. Uh, entombed animals, how they're free, uh, Plexi uh, uh, fossil, uh, the, the dinosaurs walking with people. Here is the New Jerusalem images thereof, and this was taken by the uh, Hubble telescope, and that is the crystalline mountains of the crystalline sea next to uh, of the bottomless ocean of God's adoration for one and all of us. And it's this way it comes. And until next time, I love you all.